with her cover of the Steelers Wheel Classic and her video pays homage to the infamous... Oh. Baby. <laughs> yeah, look at all those chicks. <laughs> Lou and I, we went to um, a nightclub, which my mum wasn't too pleased about that I was going to because we was 15 at the time. This guy comes over to Lou and he goes, um, can you sing? I was like, yeah. <laughs> when he gives her a card and she comes over to us, she goes, this guy's in my hand. We were like, come on, Lou, he's probably some pervert, you know. I don't Maybe she thought I was trying to pick her up. Maybe I was just lying. But obviously intrigued did get to her because she called three months later. I phoned one day from school in a lunch break. She came down, met me. She was trying songs out, see what was feeling good. She just couldn't believe it. Like, and at the time, I didn't have anything to do with it. I can always remember going for a meeting where he introduced me to Esther and Vernet. We was all in the studio and there was talk that we really would be great if we had one more girl. I said, oh, I've got my friend from school, Kelly. <laughs> and I went down and I sang for him at the record company. And there it was, the four of us. I'd love to know what Dennis's thinking was, because you had the sisters who came from like a gospel background, and Kelly and Louise, who, you know, stage school girls. I wanted a twist, you know, pop and, and gospel together. It gave you a wider spread. So for me, you know, it's about the songs and the voices. No matter how near far. But I love their image with the boots and the tomboyish, and because Esther and Bernie are very religious, they didn't want to do anything that was sexual, which everyone thought would be a big mistake. You weren't really allowed to fancy the sisters because that whole sort of gospel thing made it kind of, not religious, but you didn't really have those type of thoughts. They were kind of forerunners of um, that kind of Britney Spears, I read my Bible every night. I think you want your pop stars to be wild. Do you think your religious beliefs have kept you away from that raunchy image you could have gone for? Yes, but then there are some people who are raunchy and still are Christians. Cute. Oh, oh, oh blimey. <laughs> Not now, little girl. By the nature of the way that they got put together, I think the sisters always felt like, well, we're the group, and, and, the, and tried to make the other two feel a little bit... It's just the impression that I got that the other two were kind of, like, lucky. We were on a, such a vibe and so happy to be given the opportunity and just flying around the world promoting our record. Yeah. It's so cliche, but it did happen overnight. Baby, can't you see? This love was meant to this be. Meant to we, be. Don't don't let go. we had sold 1.4 million albums in the first year and we were a debut band. I, I didn't realise how great that was. I think just to be here at the Brits and actually perform on the show for us was a, a great honour. <laughs> Eternal, the best new act. Girls, are we enjoying ourselves? Yeah. Yeah. We'd won Best Newcomers at Smash It's and we'd been nominated for a Brit and the album had gone like quadruple platinum. Looking back now, God, that was bloody fantastic, wasn't it? People was going, all these girls will last forever, they really are eternal and that was it was that kind of thing. and. It was such a vibe. And then one day, I, I don't know where it came from, I just had to go. And sometimes in a band, in a close situation, things happen. I suppose because you've got two sisters within a the band, they might sort of gang off. We do miss a really a lot. The thing that destroyed Eternal was themselves. We just were different people and we just had different ideas on the way our lives were. It was really hard to understand one another. Some people thought mm. the, the white girls being kicked yeah. out of the group. Yeah, I hate hearing it that. was horrible. Race had nothing to do with Louise's departure at all. 
I think the tabloids will make up what they want to make up. But a lot of it was to do with personality clashes. It was just purely different people, different personalities that wanted different things. Louise was always sexy. She just got highlighted when she was on her own because the focus would be on Louise more. Most fanciful female star, Louise. Obviously, Louise had her reasons for doing it, which made sense for her because she wasn't happy, but I was happy and we were being successful and it was great. You just about to release the greatest hits of Eternal. Does this mean you're going to split up? No, no. Not at all. To lose one member is carelessness, and to lose two is just downright stupid, especially if you've got um, a hit act. I don't know where the separation began between myself and the girls. I was a very different person from a totally different background. Why didn't Esther and Vernie just do it by themselves in the first place? Because they clearly didn't want the other two there. I just got a fax at home saying that I was no longer a member of the band. I felt upset because I thought, God, it's just getting less and less, you know, and it's sad, really. To date, there has been no reconciliation. <laughs> you look back and you think, what an absolute waste. You know, they did eight million records and they still had years in them. They just messed up. What you gonna do? Ain't nowhere to run when it's looking for you.